Hello everyone, and welcome to another Line of Sight hobby video. This month, we're going to tackle a conversion that is near and dear to my heart. Namely, taking an Armager class model and turning it into a proper war dog. When I started playing Chaos Knights, I at first attempted to figure out ways to run nothing but big knights, based solely on my dislike for the way generic Armager models look. I tried souping in some Death Guard for obsec troops and action options, slapped Magnus in the list to warp time his winged behind all over the table, and even more outlandish options to avoid playing with Armager models. That all changed when I saw a picture of a converted war dog on the internet somewhere with four limbs looking like a proper hound. I fell in love with that look, and as you can see by the slideshow of models that have been appearing on the screen, I've now replicated it many times. And today, we're going to have a look at how it's done. follow along with this project, you'll need the following materials. First, one armature kit, and the new War Dog kit works well too. Second, you'll need one extra set of armature legs and feet, these are easily found on eBay. Third, you'll need something to use for the head. I've been using the large skull from the GW Skull Box for all of mine, but there are lots of 3D printed and other interesting model options out there for your choice. Next, you're going to need two to three different thicknesses of metal wiring for the tail and connections to the head. I'm using 16 gauge brass wire for the structure of the tail with some larger copper insulated wire that I've found at a hardware store. And then some really, really thin wire to wrap at the end. Next, you'll need three different magnets for the chassis plus more for any weapons you want to magnetize. I'm using four millimeter by 1.5 millimeter magnets with an N52 strength rating. You're also going to want a pin vise or drill with appropriately sized bits for the magnets and wiring. You want some super glue? You'll also want some plastic glue. You're going to need some plastic tubing that is slightly smaller or slightly larger than the magnet. I use tubes that come on the tops of my paintbrushes. I also recommend having some blue tack and some green stuff, they're both very important for this build. And you're going to want some snips, some pliers, an X-Acto knife, and a jeweler saw, although that bit's optional. You may also find yourself wanting a reference photo. Before I dive into this tutorial, I'm showing some pictures on the screen of three war dogs that had no leg customization at all. The parts of this video where I saw into the leg with the jeweler saw are extremely optional. If this is your first one, I highly suggest placing the legs similar to this in such a way that they don't require any customization. This video is showing my 8th war dog conversion, and as such I'm looking to diversify my builds for the sake of variety on the tabletop. But for a first war dog, it's absolutely fine to just use the legs as stock, and that will speed up the process quite a bit. Before beginning this tutorial process, you should assemble the chassis and the legs, but not the feet, and pelvis of the war dog. Do not glue the domed top on the pelvis, and don't glue any of the legs on, or the armor plating to the legs either. It'll save you a lot of time down the road. The pelvis for the pose I've chosen is going to carry the entire weight of the model. What I've usually done with these is basically slathered plastic glue on the connection points, and press them together very hard for about 5 minutes until the bond is completely welded. This time, however, the entire weight of the model is going to be on one foot coming from the pelvis, so I'm taking a few extra precautions. First, I'm going to mix some green stuff up in small batches so that I don't waste any, and it'll be used to fill the pelvis cavity. The nice thing about green stuff here is that we can proceed without waiting for it to cure completely as long as we're kind of careful. If you want to be really safe, just wait about 90 minutes after doing this step, and then come back. Once we've mostly filled the hollow area, it's time to place the pelvis on the body itself. I'm going to do this first without glue to make indentations on the pelvis, and then come back with glue afterwards. There are a few orientations for the pelvis that you can choose, but for this particular pose I want the connection point for the legs to be high up on the model, just like the pelvis on an actual dog would be lined up with the spine. After getting a good indentation, and if you don't want it to stick, I recommend getting the torso area wet with some water first. Pull off the pelvis, let the torso dry for a minute, and then apply super glue to the green stuff and plastic glue to the pelvis. Press together firmly for a minute or two, or you can rubber band them together if you prefer, and while that is curing, let us turn our attention to the legs. The 
this point, it's time to break out the blue tack and do some general dry fitting. I like to put the reference photo on my screen and then crop in until it's approximately one to one with the war dog legs. Ideally, I want to do a pose where I'm cutting up one or at most two legs to make it work out. More than that gets extremely messy very quickly and you lose pieces and I don't like how much time that takes up. As mentioned earlier in the video, this part is completely optional and should not be thought of as required. Most of my first batch of war dogs were done with completely unchanged leg poses and they worked out just fine. This time, however, we do have bigger ambitions. The goal is to make this particular war dog look as if it's mid stride with only one back leg supporting it. To make sure this is going to work, I like to get some big gobs of blue tack and slap them in the shoulder areas. This lets me pose the front legs easily and set them while still being able to change up the back legs at my leisure. It looks like I need to modify the back right leg for this pose, and we can probably get away with minimal cutting on the other ones, if at all. I may have to trim into the hydraulic springs on the back of the front legs later to get the foot position I want, but that's a relatively easy thing to do, and we'll talk about that if we have to. To start with, we need to snip the connecting pipeline between the thigh and the foreleg. This is something that I was super hesitant to do the first few times I tried it, but the official War Dog models have that missing on half the legs anyway. It makes it look more chaos, I guess. Once we're done with that, it's time to take the jeweler's saw and carefully cut along the connection point between the thigh and the foreleg. Once we've done that, it's time to hold the pieces up to the reference photo again and see if they match the shape we want to make. Once all of our pieces are set, it's time to clean up the cut lines with an X-Acto knife so that they're as level as we can make them. This is important because my method of choice for joining these back together is nothing more than plastic glue, force, and a little bit of time. But Jaden, I hear you say, there's no way that's stable enough, why don't you pin it? Well, that's a good question. Basically, my experience has been that these surface areas are big enough to create a strong enough chemical weld between the various portions of the leg to support the weight of the full model. This crazy leaping forward model is held together by this method, and aside from accidentally slamming it in the car door once and shattering it, it's held up fine for almost a year, and with a much worse center of gravity than the one we're building in this tutorial too. Once cured, and I recommend letting this cure for at least 30 minutes, the legs are pretty much ready to mount on the chassis itself. This stage is the most finicky of the whole process, and there are a lot of moments that will require some improvisation once started on the front pair. First, we need to figure out what's happening with the feet. With the front legs still blue tacked into position, figure out the angle you want the feet at. You will almost certainly have to trim the prong on the ball socket off to make this work, although you might get lucky and you won't have to, and that's totally okay either way. Once the angle of the foot has been established, it's time to mark where to cut the back pistons if necessary. That wasn't required on this build, but if it was, you would basically trim those back pistons a couple of millimeters in front of where you want them to be, and then correctly gauge the angle and cut that with an X-Acto knife. Once we've got the legs and the feet set up to glue together properly, simply glue them together with plastic glue. I'm not going to glue the standing leg to its foot because I want to be able to judge the angle that the entire body will be to the ground once I have the whole thing put together. At some point in here, I figured out that the back leg that I wanted to attach to the ground wasn't going to be long enough without cutting the second joint. That's alright, sometimes you have to improvise, as I said earlier. So in order to do this, all you have to do is snip off the end bit of the foreleg and then take the jeweler saw and cut in between the gap once more. We're gonna once again clean up that cut mark with an X-Acto knife so that we've got a nice even surface upon which to apply the plastic glue. And once we have it at the angle we want it, it's just another case of plastic glue and a good long cure time because this leg is important to the structure of the whole thing. The general method for attaching the front pair of legs is as follows. Mix up a bit of green stuff and blob it in the shoulder joint between the two prongs, basically just replacing the blue tack that was just there. Next, we're going to wet the socket of the leg and press it where you want it to be on the model so that it leaves an indent. You can kind of get away with not doing this if you're pretty confident you know where it's going to be, but I like to be safe. Dry the leg off once removed, and once again we're going to mix our glues a little bit here and apply some super glue to the green stuff and plastic glue to the areas where the leg will connect to the frame. 
As tempting as it is to immediately press on to the back legs, I highly recommend giving this a good 40 minutes to cure once you press the leg into the plastic of the body enough to see the seam of melted plastic beat up. This will let the green stuff cure and we'll make sure that the plastic glue is set properly. The back legs are much simpler to attach. Simply scrape the gear shapes off the inside of the leg, or if you're using the new War Dog kit with the slot, you just have to trim the prong off, and position it as desired. You're going to probably want to fix it with some plastic glue, and if they connect to other parts of different legs, it's not a bad idea to plastic glue those parts too. Now that the entire setup is glued together, we can also fix the final foot as the point of contact with the ground at an angle we like. Again, if you're using all of the legs unmodified and most of them are touching the ground, you might not have even needed to do this much work. You might have just been able to set it up flat from the get-go. Building the tail starts by drilling some holes in the back end of the pelvis. I like to have four because I found that four pieces of wire looks the best. I tend to make the brass wire holes vertical and the wiring coils horizontal. It makes it easier to keep track of, and I've just found that I prefer the look overall. Also, it makes it a little bit more stable because the vertical alignment of the holes makes gravity a little bit harder to just pull the tail down while the glue is curing. The drill bit size and wire thickness are up to you. I'm personally using 16 gauge brass wire and then some electrical wiring I picked up at a local hardware store that's maybe an eighth of an inch thick. The core of the tail is going to be brass wire as it is much sturdier. First, cut the length you want. Longer tails look really cool, but they're a pain for playing with and for storing, whereas shorter tails look slightly less epic but make life a bit easier. Your choice. I tend to twist the wire together, pliers make this easier, but aren't required if you're willing to press really hard with your fingers, and make the shape I want before I start gluing things together. First, I glue one end into about one half to three quarters of an inch of the plastic tubing that I'm going to use to cap off the tail. This particular tubing is thick enough that I can also fit one of the wires in it, which is really nice because that means that I don't have to do as much messing around later. While I have this set up and ready to go, I put a dab of super glue into the tube and pressure fit the magnet in. If you have other magnetized armatures or war dogs, you should consult with an existing weapon or model to make sure that you have the polarity right for this magnet. If you don't have one already, this is going to be your master, so make sure to come back to it when magnetizing the weapons for other models. Next, attach the other end of the body. You may want to use a little bit of green stuff to help secure this if your drill bit didn't exactly match the diameter of your wire. I recommend letting this sit for a few minutes to be properly cured before messing too much with it, as the next step does apply a little pressure to the whole thing. The final pieces of the tail are the larger wires, which slot into the holes you drilled into the pelvis and then coil in spirals around the brass core in whatever manner you like. I like to super glue these at the pelvis and then to the sides of the plastic tubing at the end, but I also like to make double sure that they aren't going anywhere by wrapping some really thin wire around the end of it to physically keep it in place. It also looks pretty neat to have the extra texture there and really disguises the ugly ends of the wiring and the fact that we used a tube that should belong to the end of a paintbrush on a model. I like to put the melee weapons on the ends of the tail, as it seems much more fitting to me for it to be out there. In a pinch though, range weapons on a highly flexible pen just seem alright too. As far as attaching the head goes, there are a couple of options. What I've traditionally done is jam the skull piece in at the angle I like and plastic glue it in place with a lot of pushing. What I've been doing a lot more recently is building a neck, similar to the tail, and attaching it that way. This lets you twist the head around to look in whatever way you want, and gives you more length on the front to balance out the tail. One of the nice things about the skull is that the eye sockets are great places to glue wires in, so you don't even necessarily have to drill into the skull if you don't want to. I've done it both ways, and I think they all work. 
Either way, drilling some more holes into the body is a must here, and once again we use the same brass wire as the structural support of the model before attaching the wires to give it more of the profile we want. The heads on my war dogs get to hold the regular carapace weapons, the Diabolus Stubber, the melt -a gun or the new Havocs. I usually mount it on the underside of the jaw, and frankly I'm not convinced it's worth the effort to drill the magnet its own hole in the skull. Alternative places for this are include the top of the skull or alongside the main weapon on top of the carapace. I've even put magnets on the shoulder plates, so it's really up to you. Whatever you choose, make sure the magnet is the same polarity as all the other ones on the chassis so that you can attach any weapon you feel like there. At the last, we have a nearly complete conversion. At this stage, I blue tack on the shoulder plates so I can take them off for easier priming and painting later. I'm not even sure if I'm going to put them on this particular one because I kind of like the sleek profile. I also don't tend to put the leg armor on these guys because it doesn't add a whole lot to the overall look, and it makes it a little bit more cluttered and bulky. But you can use it to make portions of the tail bulked out or on the back legs without changing the profile too much. Random chaos bits are also fantastic to apply here. Spikes and cracks and chains are all options, though I tend to leave my war dogs pretty pedestrian once I get done with the actual converting, as each pizza I attach to the model is more painting time. Magnetizing the weapons is as simple as shoving a magnet and some glue into the arm socket of the gun that is the opposite polarity of the body. I double and triple check these connections to make sure they work because undoing this step is a massive pain. This is also why I'm primarily using 4mm magnets because they fit perfectly into the arm sockets of the War Dog weapons and they pressure fit really nicely with a little bit of super glue and are very secure. And there we are, a completed War Dog conversion. Sure to stand out on the tabletop or to stand in as part of a massive hunting pack of these dangerous little beasts. If you've liked what you've seen here, please feel free to subscribe. We try to put out one hobby video a month right now, and we've got plans for many more. If you'd like to support us, you can go to our Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash LOSWarmachine. I'll leave in the link in the description. Until next time, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later.